This is Randy Moggins from Off Planet Radio, and um, this is going to be a special show that I'm doing with my friend Thomas Williams from Truth, Honor, and Integrity. Thomas Williams, welcome. Hi, Randy. Uh, it's a layer. I'm glad to be back on your show again. And uh, I think it's our gonna, show, actually. We're yeah, calling this. We're gonna, yeah, this we're gonna have some fun, adventure. I think. <laughs> Joint venture. Yeah. Yeah. Um, talking in the background for quite a while about doing this and seeing the events that have been rolling out and then just cascades now on the internet um, coming from a number of different sources, not the least of which is the collapse of the Corey Good, David Wilcock wing, the um, sudden explosion of confession, tears and sorrow from Jay Widener. And um, the continual haunting of the UFO conspiracy alt media syndicates that are running, not even in the background at this point, the alternative media has been completely infiltrated. And uh, for the most part, it has now become impossible to do any type of real actual exposure, not the disclosure of anything related to ufology or um, black projects, the effect on, on new information coming out and the ongoing exposure, not disclosure, has, it's chilled the field. There's just, there's so much confusion going on right now. So Thomas and I have sort of huddled on this and realized that uh, we just need to put our, our pieces out there on the table and then, of course, it's up to you, the listeners, to investigate what's been said and to start discerning for yourselves. Because ultimately, without, um, without traffic on YouTube channels, without bodies and seats at conferences, without book sales, the, the bloodstream of this whole thing collapses. So ultimately, this is a consciousness raising aimed at informing the audiences out there that um, you're basically propping up the inhibition of real information at the expense of what is basically entertainment, entrainment, and um, entrapment. Well, what do you think, Thomas? Yeah. Um, I mentioned recently in this show that you only need 3.5% threshold of a group of people to make change. We more than have that with the alt media. Now, unfortunately, uh, Though the alt media is fractured into tiny pieces, riddled with programs, riddled with agents, uh, riddled with game players, and um, splintering everyone off. You know, uh, there's a lot more. Yeah, you've been in this longer than I have. There's a lot more people involved now uh, that want to get involved, that are being misled by uh, agency think tank programs. And um, it's time that the people got together. It is damaging, you know, and, and we need to focus more on what is productive rather than what's non-productive, likes of FISA documents. They're not going to tell uh, our listeners anything new. Uh, whether the Earth's flat or round, you know, uh, whether we went to the moon or not, who cares? So it's not going to fix our current uh, problems. And the alt media, a combined alt media that's not uh, fractured uh, with what is largely uh, many decades past knowledge, particularly in the ET uh, yeah. environment. Yeah. None, none of it's new. It can't be new because of the peace treaty. This is why the abduction uh, stories have fell off. You're only hearing uh, stories from a decade, two decades, three or four decades ago, or even seven, you know. Um, for those of us that have been in uh, alt media long enough, we've heard them all. No, nothing's new. And so we have to get together and get rid of these uh, clowns, high-profile clowns as well, in the alt media, dictating uh, things and a narrative 
But as you said, it's not disclosure. <laughs> I said it's five years next month when I outed Corey Good and uh, David Wilcock as a program, you know, and uh, here we are five years later and we're seeing the beginning of the collapse of them. But it's not only uh, them that's collapsing, but the alt media is collapsing. In, what, in what, what's stuff. growing up around this? Um, we'll talk about the Corey Good thing because it weaves in and out because it became the focus mm. by which we were able to fi finally begin to point fingers at things we kind of already knew. And the circus that became Cosmic Disclosure on Gaia TV was really a jumping off point for Corey and David. It always was. Um, David Wilcock was known to be scouting. These are words that um, were spoken to me when I was in Boulder, Colorado in 2013. And a person there with whom I was working that weekend, I was at a conference, began talking about Guy and the fact that there was some displeasure over the fact that Gaia had, against the wishes of certain key people, brought in David Wilcock. And that David at that time was doing uh, one show and he was in the background already scouting talent, and those are pretty precise terms, yeah. for a second show, which became Cosmic Disclosure. And uh, as you know, um, as relayed, related to us by Shane yeah. in the video that I did with Shane, um, Shane was initially the object of David Wilcox's search. Yeah. And uh, Shane backed out, and Corey came in with pretty much, uh, at that point, according to the historical record, because we have documentation of Corey's online activities, mm -hmm. which, by the way, those documents, it's 100 pages of um, screenshots of forums where Corey was actively posting. That's all documented. There's 100 pages of it on the, on the YouTube channel at Off Planet Media. And if you go keyword search Shane the Ruiner and Corey Good, that video will pop up. Those yeah. documents are archived on a server and you can download them. So we've, we've established that Corey was basically even before David came into the picture already fomenting a very large story. He data mined. He was in the background chatting up people who were actually part of different programs. And um, Christine Anderson, who also corroborated in an interview, outlined what she knew about Corey and how Corey began to work this, uh, this deception that he is now being called out for. So, mm. uh, but what it's done is it's fo focused on what is basically a very fractured community and a community that is totally unaware that they're paying to be lied to while the truth has already been put out there in large quantities if they just looked at it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, David was warned by uh, both Drake and I that uh, Gaia TV was being run by a coven. He was also warned by Shane. And so this latest uh, so-called resignation, when the heat gets turned on, uh, David Wilcock does a runner. Uh, and you remember putting out a joint um, appeal to Corey uh, yes. back in 2007. I do. Yep which we uh, offered Corey an olive branch to step forward because we both knew that Corey was going to get thrown under the bus. As Wilcock doesn't, he does. Every time that he gets turned on, he does a runner. Uh, and he fakes uh, some attack or he's uh, busy writing a book or busy doing a video that never, ever turns up. And, uh, you know, I, uh, we both got a lot of flack for out and Corey and Shane did um, back in 2014, um, citing we were um, 
promoting uh, not full disclosure. <laughs> and yet we all argued uh, they're not promoting any disclosure. The uh, parroting, um, of course, Corey came out and he's parroting largely um, Randy Kramer. We went uh, before him on the 20 and 20 back. Um, right. Uh, and then, uh, from what I know, uh, the Shane, uh, the, Corey and his wife were compiling a narrative um, that would appeal to David Wilcock by throwing in the Lord of One as well. Right, right, yeah, exactly. Um, in fact, it was very well choreographed. If you read some of the messages from the Blue Avians that Corey had on his site in 2000, time's getting away from me now, 2016, when I initially pulled the trigger on Corey, mm. and let me, let me look at the date here. Okay, 2017 was when I did my original post on Facebook, which then, got, <laughs> which then was reposted on the Project Avalon forum. Yeah, well. The impetus, impetus for Bill Ryan sitting down and writing a summary of all of the the history of Corey Good on Avalon, which then spawned the famous dark journalist Bill Ryan interview, mm. which became in the mind, which basically hardened the entire cult image of the uh, SBA, the Sphere Being Alliance, which is Corey Good's um, front organization. Yeah. So in 2017, when I called them a cult, that was really kind of the beginning. I'm, I'm putting that out there just because yeah. the timeline gets distorted. And it was, I was never credited by dark journalists properly. Bill Ryan, to his credit, did give me credit. He posted my post yeah. onto the Avalon website. And what happened in the process of this became one of the most fractious things I've ever seen on the internet in terms of how people jumped on bandwagons. That post on Facebook in, in uh, April of 2017 had hundreds of comments on it. Yeah. Much of it was gang stalking by Sphere Being Alliance people. Yeah. Outraged that I could say such a thing. And so the, the cold aspect of this, you know, in, in, in the very fact that that number of people came and spouted love and light messages while damning us at the same time was in itself a tell on exactly how much of a cult this thing really became. Oh, yeah. It, you know, it's... I, I put it out. I, I did, like I said, uh, back in June of 2014, I got a bit of stick from it, uh, both privately and collectively. Um, Drake wasn't too pleased, but uh, I knew... Um, via my own knowledge, there was no Blue Avian group. And uh, that was what led me to asking Shane, you know, what's the story on this? Was This doesn't fit to me. Um, and then obviously we got some more details. Both of us got some more details from Shane. Uh, and then it kind of went quiet. And then uh, up pops contact in the desert, you know, bringing in the youth. Well, for, you know, for people who can see, uh, and I mean see on a different level, uh, see through the illusion, they told you on that billboard what they were doing. It was another, it was a three-year harvesting program with the children. We're going to um, pull the youth in with comic books and uh, cartoon versions of Corey. And um, at that point, I spoke out again. Uh, and obviously your post had a big effect. Uh, um, quite why Bill Ryan waited three years uh, to uh, jump on the bandwagon of your post is beyond me because he, he should know better than most uh, because it's, it's his group. But then, uh, as I know too well, um, probably you as well, Project Avalon uh, is run by MI5. Um, uh, Bill Ryan... Simon Parks and Corey Good are all reporting back. That was another data harvesting program. 
um, and people were coming forward, as you mentioned earlier, about who had been in the programmes, and they were getting reported back to MI5 and also the Men with, Men with Hill crew, which um, is in the middle of the UK. It's an American base with others below it. And those people were being targeted. A number of people got targeted. Anyone who piped up with their abilities or uh, visions or dreams or whatever was all getting harvested in that program. Miles Johnson was another one. Uh, and the Super Soldier program, because they're the ones that were getting reported, they were stepping out of their programs, um, suddenly became targets, which sadly... Um, culminated in the death of Max Spears. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Under uh, very strange circumstances, um, yeah. what happened there, and, and, you know, many people believe Max, well, I think all of us at this point know Max was basically uh, lured into a trap in Poland. Oh, yeah. Right there, he, he gave a talk, but it appears as though by the accounts that we've gotten, Max was under extreme mind control while he was there. Even it even shows up when you look at the video that he did in Poland, yeah. that he was under extreme pressure and duress. And uh, so, what happened immediately after that, we don't know the details, but um, we've never gotten a clear answer. There's never really been any type of coroner's inquest. Um, what smelled about the death of Max Spears to me was Poland's not a third world country. They are part of Interpol. Yeah. And a proper police investigation was never done on that, which tells you right there, this is a high level operation. Well, the fact that, that um, a so-called conspiracy theorist, as we were all called at one point, even made the BBC news, yeah. tells you there's something uh, a bit iffy right there and that you know people die every day but um you know are they on the bbc news no so there was something very different uh, and i think well i know we both have the same name that was involved in that that particular person also um uh, chose to send people to be violent towards Shane because he said too much also. Yeah. And this is uh, some of the things that the members and the listeners don't understand, uh, the pressures of being a whistleblower or show host. There's, there's an awful lot of fun and games that goes on behind the scenes that, that the listeners and members are just not aware of. You know, threats and uh, psychic attacks and violent attacks and mm. ultimately yeah. uh, max uh, was a death attack yeah and that's uh, this is what goes on and, and i think m uh, more of the listeners really need to understand that you know that these the desire for knowledge uh, sometimes goes too far you know uh, like i've said in my own show don't ask me for operational uh questions was i just won't answer them because it's putting people at risk you know uh for those of you with long memories um wilcock admitted it drake never both drake and wilcock got people killed by housing stuff they shouldn't have done you know wilcock admitted it on his own video i think that was going back in 2012 13 uh, and you have to have an, an element of responsibility um, and it's something that far too many uh, just throwing stuff out and not thinking uh, who's that going to affect. So it's not lost on me when I've yeah. gone back through this timeline a number of times that um, the death of Max Spears also was the ushering in of Corey Good. I mean, that was really in that same time frame. I've often wondered if those two things were not coincidental, if there wasn't some part of this that took out one to bring up another, mm. especially at a time when Max had basically come around and started talking about the ritual pedophilia that was going on and, and doing some pretty in-depth interviews and exposures about this. Yeah. 
Corey, on the other hand, has never addressed traumatic mind control operations in any of his shows. He's laced almost all of it with technology and space fantasy and the sphere beings. And he has stayed away from the, co the concept that at the end of the day, all of these programs are underscored by extreme traumatic, violent mind control operations. Yeah. Well, you have to look. You know, one of the things when I was being questioned, I looked into Corey's background. You know, 2014, he became an FBI infraguard informant. Exactly. The same, the same year he came out, he worked for all the top cabal corporations and some sort of IT expert. And he also worked for the agencies at one point teaching other agents how to be trolls and chills in the alt media, which I outed and he admitted was Wilcock asked him in one of the Gaia TV shows and he, he, he admitted it, you know, and then he, the fake moniker, you know, good ET, TXSG, you know, people thinking it's, it's good ET as in extra, extraterrestrial XGS or SG. No, it was but good uh, without the E, or good with the E, which is his, his name, Texas TX SG Sergeant is one of his security jobs. You know, and it, it, the whole thing was duping the public. And um, I wasn't going to uh, be party to that, but suddenly people are coming around and saying they've met the Blue Avians. Uh, no, you haven't. You, you've roped yourself into a fake uh, program. You know, and of course, uh, the Blue Avians dropped off. And when I outed, the, um, there is no blue sphere uh, for the start. There is white spheres. Um, I've seen them. And there's no beings in them either. And uh, so suddenly the blue sphere got dropped to the Sphere Being Alliance. You know, and people should notice, why, why are they changing it? Uh, well, they're changing it to fit a, a narrative, you know, because uh, one thing uh, you don't do is flip-flop. Uh, I had enough of them in the last show I was part of. <laughs> Flip-flopping, you know, you got to have some consistency. And if they're not consistent with their answers, then uh, you've got to ask them the right questions. Um, it, it all fell apart, yeah. Um, it's just uh, disappointing from my aspect uh, and yours that we outed these people back in 2014, and yeah, uh, and Shane, and yeah, uh, no one said nothing. They all hid behind their books and whatnot. And now, all of a sudden, when it's become uh, like, a, a topic to jump on because a, a few others have now outed them, the likes of Linda Moulton Howe and Jay Widener and others who were fine working alongside them, you know, uh, and kind of working off the popularity of uh, Good and Wilcock, you know, turning up a contact in the desert, and now all of a sudden they're not flavored a month, and let's jump on the bandwagon like Bill Ryan did with your post. You know, where was Bill Ryan for three or four years? Nowhere. And then suddenly he jumps on your post, and, you know, you've got Linda Moulton Howe. She was sat there in contact in the desert, as did Jay Widener. So it was okay to go uh, to the big conferences and get money and sell my book. But it, and ignore what Wilcock and Corey Good were up to. That uh, uh, I find hypocritical, and I don't like it. So it's uh, so it's just... in the present tense right now. Jay Widener has been on YouTube channel to date as of today's session together. Or at May 22nd, I think Jay and Yvonne Palermo, who is also known as Groovy Bean, have done five, perhaps six episodes now on YouTube, exploding the 
Corey Good's story from the standpoint of what happened there. Yvonne Palermo, who I know and have talked to, was trashed while she was inside of uh, Corey's organization. She began to um, voice some suspicions about Corey's authenticity and his story and eventually wound up leaving the sphere of being alliance. She's a bit of an activist, so she was sort of a sort of a front person. And um, they proceeded to post things about her that are were private medical re, medically related uh, information. Now she's talked about this, so I'm, I'm free to say that it included uh, a traumatic brain injury that she had suffered, and they were using this to attack her as being unstable because of this traumatic brain injury, hmm. which on a person who is a targeted individual as she is, yeah. created an enormous amount of trauma and pressure. So she has now teamed up with Jay Widener, and Jay began by apparently apologizing. I've seen some of the videos, I've watched them in part. Most of them are two to three hours long and I really don't have the patience to go through three-hour video sessions. So I skimmed through several of the videos and listened to different aspects of what was being said. Um, that Jay Widener has now turned around and said, I'm sorry, I was suckered just like you, is beyond disingenuous. Yeah. Uh, I have emails from Jay Widener that go back to uh, 2017, when Jay Widener contacted me about an interview I did with Patty Greer, who does who did crop circle films, which were films that she had licensed to Gaia, uh, I think in 2012, and she received a sum of money with the understanding that Gaia would promote her films, put them on their networks, and. Um, their job was basically to promote the films. Instead, the films were largely buried. And as a result of that, Patty saw little or no income accrue from those videos for a number of years. Now, I don't know the exact details. That is not the reason right now, by the way, and I'll just say this, Patty Greer is presently being sued by Gaia TV for $1 million under the umbrella of a, a defamation charge and this is a civil civil hearing so um what's going on there is largely that um patty was willing to settle with gaia tv and in exchange for that there would be a non-disclosure that was an offer made tendered in court um the court didn't actually gaia missed key filings on that on that hearing and there was extensions of deadlines for filings that ultimately, I think, the original suit brought by Gaia was thrown out of court. And then 10 or 15 days later, it was reinstituted into the court again. The, the tenant of the, the, tenet of the um, lawsuit against Patty Greer has to do with information that Patty shared online as did I regarding what were called the gem drops, if you remember this. And the gem drops were the Gaia employees movement, allegedly. These were almost QAnon-like information drops talking about the Luciferian agenda at Gaia and various aspects of mistreatment by, by Gaia towards some of its present and former employees. Among those gem drops then came the infamous David Wilcock resignation letter from Gaia. Those gem drops circulated widely on the internet and they have pointed at Patty Greer now as being the source of the gem drops. However, it's just interesting to note that there is information now connecting the gem drops to members of Corey Goods organization. Oops. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say that certain people 
responded to what we might say was a honeypot operation, yeah. clandestinely done. And because this is in litigation and because I don't have permission to share the evidence, the only thing I can say is that there is, we'll say, strong indications and reasonable evidence to now demonstrate that Corey Good and or Corey Good and people operating under false names within his organization masterminded the gem drops, including the David Wilcock resignation letter. Yep, there's um, a plethora of it going on now. Uh, you know, it's not just uh, Patty who's been a uh, lawsuit, uh, crowdsourced for truth. Uh, you know, I've got um, some issues with them uh, because I believe that they're a faction based group. Uh, perhaps we need, we'll get into that shortly. Um, but, you know, they chose to. Um, out on particular alt media personality, and suddenly they're all wrapped up in a six million dollar per head lawsuit. Um, <laughs> you know uh, where they come up with these figures, I do not know. Uh, and essentially, it's putting the frighteners on certain alt media people, as it will do. Not everyone has uh, grown a set, shall we say. Um, and this is what they're doing, throwing lawsuits out. And uh, I think there was 270 Twitter accounts. Uh, Robert David Steele outed, uh, uh, added to his lawsuit as well as crowdsourced for truth. Um, and, you know, these people have big organisations backing them. And, yeah, it's funny how they'll question... Uh, my background or Kim's background or your background and yet they don't question the likes of Steele or Wilcock or a number of others you know where's the double standards well there is no double standards that are sending agents out and millions everywhere to infiltrate and uh, disrupt the alt media that's what they're doing that's the but that was publicised that was publicised yeah. that they basically had an operational desk yeah. To begin staffing to put people out into the internet as as false voices. When you begin to look at this operation, um, Robert David Steele comes near the top of the list in terms of somebody that is both a, an insert and probably a handler as well. Yeah. And looking at where he inserted himself into slash was inserted and people that he has commandeered for his operations. Let's, I mean, let's just talk about Jordan Sather for a minute. Mm. Jordan, Jordan Sather today is a completely different being than the Jordan Sather who showed up as one of Corey's kids at Contact in the Desert in 2017. Yeah, well, they both got wrapped into programs and they both ended up on um, being drugged and hooked on drugs, which is why uh, the girl, Teresa, dropped out. Well, yeah, you know Tracy and Eris. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was some fun and games that went on there. And then uh, I know both of them are being treated for uh, drug issues, which I think was deliberate. Um, whether it, was, it came from Corey or one of the others, but it certainly came out of that programme. You know, um, and that lad, uh, I've seen, I've seen pictures of him. I don't listen to him because he's only parroting what uh, Robert David Steele is telling them. And uh, you know, I would love to see Jordan say that step out of that program, but can he? And, and therein lies the problem. You know, uh, a young lad who talks rather well, comes across rather well would be uh, beneficial uh, to lower the age group of the alt media, which is, you know, generally people over 40 or even over 50. You know, we'd like to get the youth involved. So I'd love to see Jordan say that, uh, encourage more of the people of his own age group to look at what's going on globally. Um, but he's wrapped into the programme. He got wrapped into the... Um, fame, if you like, 
of Wilcock and Corey Good, but it's all fake. Um, uh, that lad's in trouble. That lad's in trouble. And interestingly enough, um, he started out as somebody who basically did whiteboard explanations mm -hmm. of topics that you and I have talked about and other people have talked about addressing a younger audience. And to his credit, and even to the credit of the Corey Good group, they recognize something that is actually rather critical, that ufology and the internet alt media in general has failed to attract people of the, the millennial and Generation X and the current generation. Yeah. Uh, ufology is so aged at this point, they're dropping like flies. I mean, uh, Stan Friedman just died. Um, we've seen the death of, in, in the last year, a half dozen leading figures that were at one time uh, conference headliners. Yeah. Some of them good and some of them not so much. But the bottom line is that Jordan Sather's narrative changed remarkably after contact in the desert. And it changed even more dramatically after his first interview with... Robert David Steele. Exactly. Okay. It should be noted that Sather also attended that year an enclave up at East Seti, James Gilliland's little um, mountaintop enclave over the ET nest, mm -hmm. and also uh, a haunt for some uh, rather wild uh, sexual escapades. I've had I've had people tell me this in private conversations that that you know Gilliland, let's just say, has Roman hands, and I don't mean it. I don't mean he's got a toga on. <laughs> um, yes. The bottom line to all of this is that the failure of the system of alternative media has largely been that it was infiltrated so early and now is so pervasive that there's no true narratives left. We did yeah. events in 2012 and 2013 with Duncan O'Finian, and we saw young people come out to these events. Yeah. Young people who wanted to get involved, who wanted to get plugged in, a lot of them had experiences. A lot of them were, were uh, let's just say, kids that had escaped the clutches yeah. of uh, projects, people that needed help with all kinds of things, entity attachments and um, very deep trauma issues. Yeah. And the hope was to begin to reach that generation and with the Corey Good debacle over the last three years, what we've largely seen now is a sullying of the entire arena to the point where there's so much mistrust and distortion that nobody knows who's telling the truth anymore. Yeah, well, the biggest name, uh, in my opinion, to come out of the alt media in the past six years got crushed by the blue avian narrative on that chain. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, all that um, background arguments and, uh, and noise, uh, in, in essence, Shane's message was lost to many. And that was deliberate. You know if you I'm go sure? back and you look at the, uh, again, I point back to the YouTube video I did with Shane that's on the Off Planet Media YouTube channel. If you go and pull down that PDF document, the 100-page document, you will see the documentation of what happened between Corey and Shane and how basically Corey was furious when um, the Ruiner blog became public. But people have to remember that, first off, Shane never wrote that blog for the public. No. Shane wrote that blog for other people like him. He wrote that to detail information to other people who were inside of projects, specifically certain projects that Shane was involved with. Yeah. And I know because I've interacted with some of these people, probably you have too. Yeah. And when that blog started to go public, there was an instant chilling effect 
on Corey against Shane, and then it became an all-out war, yeah. which forced Shane to do his first walk away. Yeah. Because Shane does not want to engage in the online vitriol. No. Shane has been very brave in what he said. He's been very generous when he's done talks with you and I. Yeah. But Shane is not a person that enjoys the spotlight and he does not enjoy engaging in constant battles. And stupidity. And stupidity. And gang stalking. Yeah. Because, in, in fact, what's really gone into, we would say the quote, success, unquote, of the good organization is how it was able to organize teams of people who worked in concert to gang stock, harass, spread disinformation, and much like they did with uh, Yvonne Palermo, to create so much mistrust around people that they called enemies and later labeled as, quote, the Dark Alliance. Yeah. So the atmosphere of, of paranoia, suspicion, um, enemy camps was sewn into this right there at that 2017 Contact in the Desert yeah. event. It was a us and them. Essentially, it became us and them, which is what the uh, a typical um, cabal typical division. Type. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Split, split the platform. Yeah create dissension, set up a leader, and then later make sure that that leader is pulled down or self-destructs, which is what you saw after contact in the desert in 2017. Mm -hmm. It was a slow fall. It was, it, it, was, it was an 18 month implosion that led to Corey and David walking away or being removed from Cosmic disclosure. Yeah. Once the heat gets turned on, um, it's a, again, it's a typical agency tactic. Um, if your agent gets exposed, you know what happens next. That agent generally uh, goes missing permanently, um, which is kind of what happened uh, going back in 2016 and the split from Cosmic Voice to THI. You know, I outed Neil Keenan and who he was working for, which faction, and uh, which agency. Um, every time he opened his mouth, I always ha I had a list of hammers. I didn't use them all. I just waited for him to open his mouth, and I kept uh, delivering back. And people started to see. And then who turns up, uh, whatever Keenan was, which I think was Bulgaria at the time, uh, he flitted between Bulgaria, Thailand, and uh, Indonesia. Yeah. But Robert David Steele again. Now, from what I know, uh, Steele told him to shut up. And then Steele took over the narrative. Keenan went rather quiet, backtracked, with, uh, and half apologised to me um, in the summer months, um, and then went missing. You know, and then suddenly turns up an awful lot heavier and an awful lot older. You know, and uh, a lot of people would, uh, have tried to convince me that the real Neil Keenan's not alive anymore, and this is a double. To me, it doesn't make much difference. He's not delivering anything. Um, That's sort of like Android Hillary Clinton. Yeah. 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 You know, this is more common than people realize, uh, even in the alt media. You know, I met David Wilcock, uh, the only conference I ever went to back in 2011, 2012 in Irvine, California. And his eyes were blue, they're not no more. You don't change color of your eyes. That's one thing that remains constant. You know, whether it's the same uh, uh, guy. And then we had the uh, curious um, interview uh, and I think we really need to touch on Project Camelot. And Camelot, yep. yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, the famous crying game episode. Yeah, well, uh, 
But then um, the split uh, in 2012 of Camelot and uh, of Cassidy and Bill Ryan, and suddenly Cassidy's doing shows on her own, which is fine. And then they brought William, what was his name, the old guy, to uh, support Corey. William Thompson. Bill Tompkins. Yeah, Bill Tompkins, yeah. Uh, who uh, sadly died last year. Um, yeah, who sadly died <laughs> yeah. after, after an eclipse. Yeah. After an event, he attended, um, where was that event? It was Oregon or Washington State. It was in the Northwest somewhere. It was eclipse of, it was the Eclipse of Disclosure Summit. I believe. Mm. And Bill Tompkins died the next day. Yeah. Right on cue, right after an eclipse, right after he had basically watched himself be used yeah. to validate Corey Good's claims. Yeah. And I had people tell me that Bill Tompkins was not happy about the fact that yeah. he was used that way. He did he did a number of events where he interacted with different people and it came back to me that Tompkins was not happy with where this had gone. No. Um, Tompkins was navigated through all of this by another figure that we can touch on here as well. Uh, we're just planting red flags on the field here. So as I'd we like, go through this. What I'd like to, to mention is the very first interview of Tompkins, where he's um, promoting Corey Good or support me. Kerry Cassidy, for the first time in two or three years, brings on a co host who just sat there. And if you ignore the hair color, I'm convinced that Michael Schratt was the original David Wilcock. Because I've sent a message to Kerry Cassidy. I said, I'm not watching your show anymore. I said, the day, uh, next day I watch your show will be when you put Wilcock and Michael Schratt on the same video. She didn't reply. But then she never does, does she? Oh, she never does. No. no. We're the little people. You know, so you you're saying that you wanted to touch on yeah as long as we're talking about tompkins let's introduce yeah. dr i use the term advisedly michael sala mm. um mm. because here's a here's another cutout figure sala has a, a, a i believe a master's degree from a, a university in australia he then shows up in um American University, and he now has a doctoral, and he's fired from American University under interesting circumstances. Uh, the thing to know about American University is that it is a CIA outpost. It's a recruiting center for, uh, CI for the CIA and key intelligentsia. Yeah. So Sala is used by Gaia and Jay Widener to validate Corey Good. Sala comes in, Sala has, Sala is one of two people operating under the banner exopolitics. We'll talk about the other person who yeah. also uses exopolitics later. Yeah. So Michael Sala, with his background and his history of writing about um, military operations, space operations, UFOs, ETs, is brought in to independently <coughs> validate Corey Good. Yeah. Sala makes a bank on Corey Good. He still does. He has never backed away from Corey or his story or from David Wilcock. What's interesting is that despite all these fallings out, certain of these people seem to be glued to the hip with each other. Yeah. Um, Sala doesn't doesn't have any interest in distance himself at all from Corey Good's story. He simply moves on. Um, Corey and David ap appear to be hopelessly attached to each other at this point, simply because divided they fall. I'm not too sure on that. 
they are doing conference. They have done a YouTube video together, and they are scheduled to do what I think has now been canceled, but was a concert or a conference appearance. But the interesting thing is that if if we can presume, and I can safely, based on what I know, that the gem drops came from Corey Good, and that David Wilcock resignation letter indicting. Gaia as being Luciferic came from came through Jem. David Wilcock has never confirmed or denied that resignation letter. He's never commented on it. Even in the statement that he made on his website um, at the end of last summer, he never mentioned anything about that letter. That letter that letter has never been validated or disclaimed. It simply sits there. Yeah. And this is actually a modus operandi with David. David oh, yes. is very famous for leaving pieces on the table and never answering questions and never responding to in inquiries about certain things he has said or done or been involved with. Now, let's not forget about David. David made his first fling at this long, long ago by impersonating a time traveler on Art Bell. Then he showed up as a psychic, which he sucked at. He tried, to make, <laughs> he tried to make a living at it, and it didn't work out for him. And let's not forget the famous fling with David Wilcock is the reincarnation of Edgar Casey. Hmm. Well, let's go back to um, David Wilcock under the pseudonym Art Aqua, which is his Skype name. Yeah. On the Skolnick report in September of 2002, and when I went to pull that up again, in fact, I had that saved on my uh, on my computer, and it went off my computer. That document, funny enough. Um, Wilcock was doing a, a report under the pseudonym of Art Aqua. This was September 2002, and he was talking about mass arrests. Debt jubilees, free money, mm. ET packages, and ET landings, and uh, deli all delivered in ET tech, and it's all happening, and also Ascension, which is exactly the same script as the now infamous interview of, of Wilcock and Drake. Exactly the same script. You know, that's why I saved it. Um, and, uh, of course, Wilcock was telling everyone that he was ascending December the 21st. It never happened, um, as predicted. Um, and then, uh, you know, as per usual, Wilcock, which is a common theme, we've mentioned it three, four, five times already, uh, when people started asking why he hadn't ascended and why humanity hadn't ascended, David goes quiet. And then uh, re-emerges saying he's writing, uh, wasn't he going to do a, uh, a television film? That's, uh, here we are, eight years later. He's, he's been working on this film for, <laughs> yeah, well over eight years. The film, as yeah. far as I know, has never yeah. gone into production. You know, uh, so I'm busy with that, and I'm busy with this. Um, you know, and... Uh, I kept asking him to come on our show, particularly on the anniversary of that interview. And he refused. You know, Drake had been discarded from the Langley 2 group, and I know it's Langley 2. You know, uh, Drake, Wilcock, Keenan, Fulford, Anna Von Wrights, and Robert David Steele. All of them out of Langley 2. You know, um, Von Wright's uh, ignored it, except where Kim caused it in a sting last year, of which now Anna Von Wright has gone rather quiet. Um, we, we had sent a document uh, through the uh, wire backdoor transfer system that goes to all agencies. Only this one went directly to a certain division of Langley. And lo and behold, Anna Von Wright spits it out the following day. <laughs> she can only have got it out of the Langley 2 section. And uh, so she got caught out, a bit like 
uh, Keenan got caught out reading the Asian faction script uh, on May the 4th, 2016, which uh, caused the breakup of CV. Well, uh, I was getting booted out of it anyway. You know, I read that um, that document because it was sent to the American government, threatening the government that if they didn't do um, what was stated in Keenan's uh, letter, they were going to financially destroy America, which is what they're trying to do now. Um, and at that point, you know, you know, privately, uh, I had uh, questioned about Keenan for a number of years. I had to stay quiet until I had sufficient information and gained enough popularity to be able to take him on. And of course, once he read that out, uh, that was enough for me. Well, so, was David Wilcock a popularized Neil Keenan? Um, to a great degree. Um, um, Wilcock um, runs the program. Mm -hmm. So uh, He's the, Keenan, Keenan works under... Wilcock, you know, um, I was sent a copy of, um, back in 2014, I think it was, of an interaction between... Um, These were Skype interactions, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. an interaction between Keenan, um, Wilcock, and Fulford. Now, Fulford told Wilcock he's not working with Keenan anymore because he's CIA and he's working for the CIA Eastern Division in Bulgaria, out of Sofia, which is why Keenan's in Bulgaria. Um, and uh, Wilcock's uh, questioning Keenan, but, uh, then says to uh, Fulford, uh, no, you're talking out of your ass, I don't believe it. Well, he was. Fulford was right, you know, and um, I think Neil personally um, got roped into doing that because of a previous arrest in the 90s, uh, both of which we know, um, mm -hmm. uh, along with Drake, uh, and Keenan got five years jail, and, um, and his passport taken out off him. So how did he get from... Uh, America to Bulgaria with no passport unless somebody has a very high level pushed him into that position. Papered him up. Yeah. You know, they, this is kind of what they do. Uh, and, uh, you know, they have some sympathy for those people who have done wrong things and get roped into doing even wrong, <laughs> more wrong things because they're covering up previous issues. You know, um, maybe, maybe Keenan had no option. You know, if someone offers you, well, we're not going to uh, give you five years jail, but come and work for us. Most people are going to take it, but they're getting themselves into more trouble. You know, and even after Keenan issued death threats to me to shut up, um, I sent uh, Kim to go and speak to him on... on you know, because I uh, thought Keenan was unaware of who he's involved with because um, because of his ego and his naivety uh, of thinking he knows everything when actually he doesn't know too much uh, or anywhere near as much as he thinks he does anyway. Uh, I asked him to try and help him and make him understand he's work, actually working for the Rothschilds and these fake Chinese elders and the Asian faction, uh, at which point uh, Neil issued death threats to her as well. So um, <laughs> Neil didn't want to listen, but we did try and help him. Uh, you know, and it, it's not about, uh, and this shows no difference, it's not about throwing people under the bus. We, uh, both of us have tried <coughs> to help certain people who have been wrapped into programs for one reason or another and gave them an, an olive branch to jump out. I did, you know, we did it with Corey and Wilcock. Exactly. Well, that was a public notice we put yeah. on Facebook. You know, uh, 
step out, admit the lies, uh, spit out who who you were working for, and let's work together as a combined community. You know, um, there's many uh, people have been wrapped into it. Keen and Drake were both involved in bad things, and uh, I don't think. Uh, they need they need to uh, recognise that and not have it held against them. You know, we've all done bad things in life that we're not proud of, but you don't make it worse. Mm-hmm. And Keen, Keenan jumped out of one uh, from out of a fire into a complete fairness mm-hmm. that he uh, maybe if uh, Mr. Crayford, Fulford, whoever he may be now, I'm not convinced it's the real one. Um, or the two other uh, high-level intelligence people who told me that the real Neil Kinnan's not alive anymore. He paid the ultimate price. And that's what I fear will happen with the likes of Sather or Corey or Wilcock if they're getting outed too much and things start to talk too much. You know, agents are uh, <laughs> ten a penny, so to speak. They're easily removed and uh, constantly removed if they become a, a, that asset gets exposed. A bit like uh, Ambassador Stevens in Benghazi. Classic yeah. example. Oops, crossfire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, what happens is you become collateral damage in the crossfire of uh, intelligence operations and factions. This is, it's very difficult to explain to people who don't know what goes on behind the scenes of how factions work. Because while it appears as though they are cross purposes, in most cases, these are highly orchestrated operations where one side may be completely compartmentalized from the other side, but they are working under the same head. Yeah. And ultimately, there's a, a cross-pollinization of agents that move back and forth. Uh, loyalties change. Teams change. Um, People are swapped in and out. They may or may not be the same people. Because in, in a lot of cases, if you and you're not the only person that's mentioned the profound change in David Wilcox's appearance and demeanor. David Wilcox went from being what I would call a rather soft personality to somebody who has shifted back and forth and at times has been very aggressive compared to the David Wilcock that originally surfaced years ago, back in the 90s. You know, for want of a better term, he was uh, effeminate, shall we say. He certainly wasn't brash and arrogant. And that's what he uh, developed into. And... um, and all about me, myself, and I. You know, um, that wasn't the David that I met in uh, Irvine, California. It just wasn't. And like I said, that David had blue eyes, the one on Ancient Aliens. If you look at the early episodes of Ancient Aliens, David Wilcox got blue eyes. This current one doesn't. Gives it away. And I think the original Wilcock may have been Michael Schratt. Very interesting. So, where do we want to go from here? Well, as you mentioned faction groups, I feel we need to bring that up. I did the faction show. Um, in um, while I was in Cosmic Voice, in, uh, it was December or November of 2015 now, and I was giving people a chance 
um, for the future to understand who works for who. Because at that point, um, the Illuminati uh, had ceased to exist for nearly a decade. You know, this is why they put out the Dan Brown stuff and everyone's going, oh, they're exposing the Illuminati. Now, <laughs> now they were feeding you a path because they knew the Illuminati was fracturing and breaking up into these faction groups. And so let's have the public all talking about the Illuminati. Uh, same as let's have the public talking about blue avians that don't exist and let's ignore what the Draco were doing and let's ignore uh, what these factions are doing, you know. Um, uh, it's split up into five factions, which is the uh, the Nazi element, um, out of Langley too, part of the, the descendants of the paperclip crew. Uh, not all are Germans. Um, actually, a number of them are actually Jewish, uh, masquerading as Germans. And then you've got the Zionist group, which again, uh, some of them are Jewish. But uh, please don't be hating on Jews, uh, as I've shown in my From Russia With Love series. Um, Jews are just being used, just like the Germans are getting used, just like the American military is being used as the... Just like the Russians are now being used. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the, yeah. the, the cabal, as we know, don't are not interested in countries. They're, they're just pawns on the chess game. And, and they'll use the, the Brits, British Empire, when actually it was the Dutch that would do most of the damage under the Dutch East Indies company run by the Rothschilds. So there's always a hidden hand. They present something uh, on on one hand, and the other hand is behind the back. It's a classic Freemasonry tactic and a hand signal. Um, and it gets people going down a certain path that they want you to go down, and they'll blame a certain person or a certain group, when it's always somebody else. It always is. So we've got these faction groups, uh, the Asian, Jesuit, uh, Nazi, Zionist, and the secret society of the five factions. And um, we have uh, faction-led alt-media groups where, where certain um, popular and not-so-popular, uh, in fact, it's more not-so-popular, it's more to do with the recent YouTube crowd, are spitting out uh, disclosure in a way uh, with elements of truth and people think that they're working for the benefit of the people and they're leaving out their own faction. And there's a number of groups, likes of uh, Able Danger, uh, American intelligence media, and others who are running faction programs where they'll... Uh, George Webb is another one, uh, where they're spitting out information to do with the other three or four factions, but leaving their one out. And people are making a big mistake is thinking that these people or these groups are operating for them by the people. They're not. They're knocking the other faction out so that their faction wins. Um, um, we really need, uh, if people take anything from this show, you have to understand that element. There's an, a number of these uh, able dangers and X-22 and AIMS and YouTubes that are running their agency people for that specific faction. And yes, you'll get some truth out of it, but they're leaving out their own. And um, I'm hoping more and more people start seeing that. There's very few uh, shows. In fact, I'm only going to mention three. Uh, ours, Randy's, and uh, Alan of YM that, that are people-based, not faction-based. You know, and uh, it's, it's an important point. You know, people go, oh, you don't like that group and you don't like this group. Uh, it's not that I don't like them. It's just that I don't like people operating under the banner that the uh, dis disclosing for the benefit of the people when what they're really doing is disclosing to knock out the other factions particularly uh 
you know, a lot of it is Zionist led, which is like a replica of the mainstream media. That's what it's become. It became the platform where they migrated, and this goes into programs like the Young Turks, the so-called intellectual dark web, um, and a number of, uh, frankly, even um, youth-oriented platforms operating, uh, even things that migrated over out of Al Jazeera, which went mainstream. We've seen a proliferation of personalities and platforms that were erected into the mainstream, uh, by the mainstream, into the alt media for the purposes of steering people to the narrative that they couldn't get on mainstream, but which held the same content, the same directives, the, the ability to direct the consciousness towards the wrong line of information and thinking. So what we've really seen is the total infiltration of the alt media. And uh, while these large, large networks now are floundering, at the same time, in parallel, they're, they're building significant ground swells on the internet. They're just using, they're using a different methodology now. And the effect has been that, um, well, look at YouTube and what's happened with YouTube, how it's, it's a cesspool. And yet at the same time, you can have your video taken down, you can have your channel taken down, you can be censored with no good reason. We had a video pulled when we discussed the Florida school, school shootings in South Florida mm. uh, 18 months ago. Yeah. And that video was taken down. And the only reason I was ever given for why that video was removed was that uh, I had been involved in, quote, bullying. <laughs> of which there was no bullying. But interestingly enough, what we did expose there was a YouTube online kitty pedo groomer mm. who was the father of one of the main figures at that at that lakeland florida school shooting one of the one of the kids that wound up being an activist yeah. and it was the father who is also yeah. uh, uh, aligned with the william morris agency in new york has mm. significant real estate holdings in florida and also was involved with um, the importation of Haitian orphans into the United States for purposes of, um, quote, adoption, unquote, child trafficking. Via the Clinton Foundation. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we are constantly surrounded by snakes. We're standing on this tiny little island and watching, to use the metaphor, the, the, the shark's basically circling right now. Yeah. And devouring everything in sight. But then um, it's up to the people to fight back. You know, um, we've all followed, uh, part of the problem is, you know, we've all followed wrong people. Um, you know, Christ, I was on with Drake for uh, uh, three years uh, and Wilcock, although. Uh, uh, not so much Wilco Keenan, you know. Um, I defended him when I shouldn't have done, which I admitted on THI, um, but I didn't have sufficient evidence to bring him down until 2016, you know. Um, and people uh, have kind of turned it into uh, almost like a soccer rivalry or... Um, sporting rivalry you know our group's better than your group uh, and you know it's that competition game again that i keep talking about in uh, my own shows it's not let me do this well this is uh we just got dropped i got dropped on zoom the computer dropped the zoom thing and stopped the recording uh it does appear that we'll save that first part of the recording but it's all, this is, this is now how it goes. Every time we get a platform that works, it gets corrupted and Zoom's going the same way as Skype. Yeah. Sorry about that. We'll edit this together. Yeah. So, uh, um, 
the gist of it, we have the three and a half percent threshold if the alt media all comes together uh, with the right focus. You know, uh, the cabal themselves uh, are crum crumbling. The control system has crumbled, and they have only now have the illusion of power, only because uh, we fear them too much. They have nothing left but threats, and um, and allowing. Uh, clowns in the alt media to put pressure on us by uh, throwing lawsuits about you know it's up to the people to um, get together and go you know is that what what alt media is all about uh, saying things out of, out of line and uh, we're going to ruin you and throw lawsuits in you know and people really have to look at Robert David Steele closely you know, his involvement in INTJ, um, ITNJ, sorry. You know, it's, it's a, a, another distraction program. It's also bringing, uh, similar to the Avalon group and the Miles Johnston group, is data mining people. Mm -hmm. Any Anyone that comes forward, you know, uh, the collecting uh, these people who are coming forward, exposing high-level or high-profile people and suddenly those people are becoming targets where uh, they're either shut up or permanently shut up you know uh, and we have to protect these type of people and this is uh likes of kevin who's been exposing things so I've met kevin. yeah let's talk about kevin and it for a minute um you've met him you know a little bit more about what he's doing than I do. I've followed him over the years back to when, and it, it is ITNJ, right? Yeah. When they did the original tribunals, um, this was several years ago, and this was also when he was still affiliated with Alfred Lambermont Weber. Yeah. Who then uh, turned nasty on him. You know, um, <laughs> Alfred Weber is a government was a government agent under the Carter administration. Is that something uh, that we should blindly trust? You know, uh, of course, Weber was also involved with uh, Michael Seller, um, which ended uh, acrimoniously as well. Um, right. Weber, this was uh, the uh, two halves of the exopolitics. One yeah. took the dot com, and the other took the dot org. You know. Um, uh, I, I used to listen to some of Alfred's shows and they just got more and more bizarre. You know, he was just putting all kinds on with no discernment whatsoever. Uh, and, and all that does is weaken the narrative. You know, uh, there's, you, you've got people uh, who are not trusting of themselves to take that leap out of what is considered normal. Uh, and uh, mainstream, and then it just takes one to one clown you put on who's then disproven, and they're too easy to jump out. Uh, and there's certain people who have done this um, and discredited not only the ET but a whole heap of other uh, topics that, that, that get covered in the alt media, you know, and, and Alfred started supporting Kevin until the heat got turned on. And then someone turned the heat on Alfred, and then he turned nasty on Kevin. Uh, well, he should have had um, a stronger uh, set of bulls, shall we say, and stuck with it. You know, I've met Kevin twice. He writes his own books. Uh, he did um, an extraordinary uh, story um, to do with the four, the four kids in Vancouver. Um, you know, uh, those children were abused badly by uh, the church people. And Kevin was a church person and they didn't really trust him when he came uh, seeking them out for their story. He wanted to tell their story. And he gained their confidence over time. And there was... Um, if memory serves me correctly, there was uh, nine, ten, or eleven uh, 
who eventually came to Kevin and told the story of what went on uh, at Kamloops and also what went on at the um, residential school at the British Royals turned up and removed uh, 10 children but never returned. Um, Kevin, uh, William Coombs uh, was the main um, person for that book and uh, William Coombs was there uh, when the Royals turned up, those kids went missing and those kids never came back. And, and between uh, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and the church and certain agency groups uh, aligned with um, other elements that uh, proliferate throughout Canada. It's, um, it's a den of iniquity with programs that place. Um, managed to shut it all down. Well, suddenly uh, William Coombs became uh, sick and uh, in bizarre circumstances and by a twist of fate, um, my uh, girlfriend at the time, Chloe, was the one that treated William Coombs and they lumber punctured him and never put it on the chart. And uh, Chloe questioned it at the time and uh, she got kind of dragged in before a committee uh, that was not part of the hospital. And so that kind of validated kind of what Kevin was saying. And he's gone on to expose uh, grave sites at uh, residential schools, grave sites at churches, uh, not only in Canada and not only in Vancouver either, but uh, in Belgium. Uh, which is another den of iniquity. Um, and uh, subsequently, the exposure of uh, the Queen of England, and in particular Prince Philip, and also the previous Pope and the current one. So, you know, he, put, uh, he puts his uh, life on the line. Uh, he travels around the country, which puts him at great risk. And he actually would be better staying where he is, uh, which is what led to the recent incident of him being picked up on the border um, of uh, Vermont and Quebec, I think it was. This is not the first time that Kevin's been dragged in by authorities. He got dragged in uh, twice in the UK. He went uh, to the UK last year and they threw him out. You know, he got arrested uh, previously going back five or six years for uh, issuing a common law uh, warrant for the arrest of Philip and the Queen, um, and also in Rome uh, for the uh, Ratzinger Pope. You know, so he's putting himself at an awful lot of risk to be uh, labelled a, a scammer. And... Uh, I find it extraordinary that, that people will question uh, the likes of Kevin and yet nobody questions what steel is involved in or what Sasha Stone's involved in at the, at the ITNJ. You know, so ITNJ comes out and they're going to... Um, they're going to expose crimes of uh, top politicians and the church and whatnot, which is exactly what Kevin's done for many, many years. So you would think if uh, ITNJ was a, a legitimate group who are really interested in exposing this level of criminality of high-profile people, then the first one you would go to would be Kevin Annett. And they refused. Kevin offered his services and they refused. And then they got nasty. So that then suggests that ITNJ is not legitimate, which we now know it isn't. Um, it's been run by um, intelligence agencies in the UK, justice departments in the UK and the Crown, and is a cover-up and also a data mining uh, issue. And uh, those people, brave people who came forward, uh, are now at risk because of steel and Stone and the others that are involved. You know, why would you, you have set up um, an organization like ITNJ and have a priest, <laughs> uh, 
a church person as uh, on one of your committee, given most of the crimes that we were talking about was uh, to do with the church. You know, and what was the other guy's name, Sir Branahead or whatever his name is, another one of the establishment. They're not going to expose their own. They never have. And, uh, I, I, you know, people coming along like you got on your post uh, yesterday, I think it was. Yep. Kevin's a scammer. Uh, says who? Alfred Weber. Really? You know, and, and Alfred Weber is the bastion of truth, the former government agent of the Carter administration. I don't think so. Well, anybody that's watched Alfred for any period of time has watched how he's turned on various people. Yeah. Um, including myself. Yep. In a very famous <laughs> documented meltdown, um, Alfred does not take having his narratives challenged well at all. And Alfred's narratives are the narratives that you have to look at as being what he is sent in to deliver. Alfred is not about disclosure of anything. He is about obfuscation. And that's a very consistent pattern with Alfred. And unfortunately, you know, I do believe he's under severe traumatic mind control. And I think, I think he's delicate enough in personality that he's controllable, that when he rolls on somebody, he's been triggered to do that. Yeah. Yeah, well, we kind of warned him. He was um, entity possessed back in uh, 15 or 16, and he got uh, kind of pissy. pissy. He gets very pissy, yes. And then he comes out, uh, I've got a, 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 I think he wrote a book on it, on uh, how he'd been taken over by mind control. <laughs> really, Alfred, you know. Uh, well, there's parts of, you know, Alfred has an official history and then there's unofficial histories. That's true yeah. with a lot of media personalities. Mm -hmm. um, I've had people that connect the dots with Alfred back to, uh, Stanford Research Institute in the late 70s mm -hmm. when they were running um, not just remote viewing programs, but actually uh, running mind control programs there as well. They, they basically took um, the technology which they appropriated from Robert Monroe and the Monroe Institute, yeah. which included um, isolation of, of people uh, causing separation of consciousness, being able to enter into um, a person's mind. I mean, most people now don't go far enough back to realize that in the 1970s, that was the formative work that was done on weaponizing psychic warfare. Yeah. And that in the alternative media, we are in a psychic war. Yep. You know it, I know it. We both know that we've been targeted. We both oh. know the effects of that targeting and how they operate. Oh, yeah. You know, um, this is the final war, and it's a battle of the mind. You know, it's not going to be fought with weapons, largely. It's the war of the minds, and it's who are prepared to step into the new world or who is going to carry on in the old world. And, and when, you know, I put that out um, it's a few years ago now, the two worlds theory, I think people are now starting to yep. see. Yep. People are seeing that the divide is becoming uh, a lot more clearer. Um, the ones that um, have retained their own mind and their own thinking levels and all the ones that are just patterning the same narrative. Um, and it's painful to watch, you know. Um, would we like to have uh, saved more? And it really is about saving. Uh, yes, but then people have their own choice. And um, this has been the most damaging and sickening aspect of the alt media to me. Uh, um, 
you know, I, when I came into it, I knew there was uh, people in it that would disrupt it, but I didn't realise the depth of it. You know, and it only really became clear to both of us when we discussed it going back five years ago now, at the sheer depth of it. Um, and it's revealed itself even more over the last few years is that the reality is 90% of it or more is corrupt. Uh, it's, they've sold out that part of um, running agency-led programs, think tank programs, and uh, the classic divide and conquer. You know, they've ran all those programs through the old media. Um, if it's not Flat Earth, which came out of Langley, um, it's you know, the New Age uh, bullshittery programs, and then you, you've got the financial programs, um, and, and then even possibly Q, uh, QAnon, you know, um, uh, and Black Lives Matter, and uh, <laughs> all lives matter. You know, the male and female, and, and then, of course, the now um, sheer lunacy uh, of uh, American politics. You know, it, it resembles what it really is, is a madhouse, where he said, she said, drama, drama, drama. Um, and they've transferred the drama from the mainstream media into the political realm, into the mainstream media, you know, and... It's not been helpful to us. You know, you've got to step away from it, uh, see it for what it is. You know, I've been telling people, uh, you know, revealing documents is not going to reveal anything new. It, it, nothing's new. You know, uh, we we know who uh, the majority of government and high level people are corrupt or involved in uh, pedophilia or other events. They're not going to, you know, I think most people are waiting for the uh, mainstream media to announce it, to validate that they were right. Well, why do we need validation from them? And this is what people have got to realize, you know, uh, and, and the classic is the ET narrative. You, you've had proof that ET exists. <laughs> you've already had it, you've had it for the last 30 or 40 years. And yet people always want more proof and more well, we proof. may have had it for the last hmm, six thousand years if you go back and look at those very curious little things that are etched in egypt and the little et people there and the accounts in history that go back to the story of the giants and the nephilim yeah i mean how much proof do you want that you know, other than humans exist in this realm that they do not come from here yeah, well, it, it's almost like, uh, well, we already know uh, most of humanity is comatose in a way. Um, you know, people don't ask the right questions. They don't look at what they see and interpret it. They just look and walk away. And as you said, the, the hieroglyphs in Egypt, why is there so many half man, half being a uh, half animal. Yeah. You know, do you think they all run around in costumes? Uh, no, they're chimera. They're part of the, uh, well, a lot of what's on those hieroglyphs are why this planet's in a, in a complete mess, to be quite honest. And yet we've got people all over the world revering these so-called Egyptians, which have nothing to do with Egypt and never were. Yeah. In fact, they're not even to do with this planet. You know, um, Freemasons, Mormons, they're all riddled uh, with uh, Egyptology, you know, uh, on a program. Uh, and that's the, the overall sad thing to, to me about the old media, is that yeah, even people who think they're awake are being led down wrong paths consistently because they don't stop and think. Look at the narrative. Does it make sense? Does it fit? It, you know, it, is it consistent? They just accept it. You know, Simon Parks is the classic example. You know? Yes. <laughs> if, if ever there was a, a person in the alt media not to trust, the background of Simon Parks is the ultimate. 
He's got a father who's a Draco king, Anu, the lord. Uh, a mother who's manted. <laughs> and, and, then, and then you go into his uh, human family. Both Illuminati. One worked for the CIA and one worked for MI5-6. Exactly. He was also a politician, like they ever tell the truth. <laughs> and, you know, with, with that type of background, um, you have to go in with ultimate guard up and he has to prove to you over time that what he's saying is the truth. You don't just believe it straight off the bat because he's talking about Mantids and Dracos. Oh, that's interesting. And believe everything he's saying. You know, that's a lack of discernment. And that's part of the problem is the ET narrative in and of itself is an escapism from reality. And that's why they drove it because it interests a lot of people and a lot of people because some people maybe be because they've had experiences that they can't describe or talk about in some aspects, but there's also an element of escapism. Uh, the ETs are coming to save you. Uh, you know, they're going to bring all this new tech and you, and, you know, and it's all flowered up uh, and your space brothers are coming down and, and you know, it's a, it's a new religion. It's a new crutch. Well, that's uh, exactly what it is. It is a new religion. It's a savior yeah. program. Yeah. As we've talked about many times with many different people, uh, including the Blue Avians and the David Wilcock raw material, uh, Law of One, uh, the cash situation. Mm. I, we can just riff down through an endless cycle of this, and it goes back into uh, the early roots of ufology itself, that there is a cult-like aspect to this. Yeah. I mean, people don't realize that intelligence agencies seeded this into the narrative going back to Adamski in the 50s. Yeah. That there is an active group operating at all times called the Aviary Group, which is part of Majestic 12. It has always been there. Mm. And that it, it is that group which infiltrates many of these UFO conferences via the speakers and by via the people and the agents and the operatives who are inside of these events. It's a harvesting operation. It's a harvesting of your consciousness, your money. And in some cases, people are abducted. People are placed into horribly compromised positions. And, and it is just an endless loose fast as a result of the fact that they seeded a cult into ufology. Yeah. It even goes into the X-Files. I mean, yeah. I think a lot of us, when we first saw the X-Files, kind of cheered that yeah. mainstream television had picked this up and that we were seeing uh, in some form a uh, type of soft disclosure, a recognition that there was something going on, that our government was actively involved with this. Yeah. But the X-Files itself was... Let's just say it was 11 narrative designed to lead you in a couple of different directions and to, again, lead you to think that the government would make what has been referred to by people like Stephen Greer as disclosure or what Corey and his group put together with full disclosure now. In other words, even though the government has screwed us over routinely, lied to us, hijacked our government, hijacked our money, sold us out, sent our sons and daughters overseas as canon father for foreign commercial interests, that we should trust them to give us disclosure about extraterrestrials. Really? Yeah. Well, it, it, I, I put, posted that as a question on the show. Who constitutes proof on the ET narrative? Uh, you know, if, if suddenly Trump announces that ETs are real, in fact, the, uh, if you look closely at a recent Twitter, Trump did admit it to do with the border wall. You know, um, which is one of the reasons why, why the wall is being built because of certain other non-humans coming across it. That's why. Um, 
and we've got that message across to them. But, you know, if Trump announces it, uh, the media will turn on them and say, we, we told you he's a complete crackpot. So and next minute, uh, people are saying, if Putin announces it, the media will just turn on Putin and start talking about Russian collusion again. So who, who is proof? You know, if a uh, craft lands on the White House and CNN is filming it, people will say, that's G- uh, GCI, is it GCI? Uh, Compute- CGI. CGI. Yeah. CGI. Yeah. It, it, they're going to deny it anyway. Those that believe in it are going to believe it, and those that don't, won't. How so, many tens, probably hundreds of thousands of people over the last 40 to 50 years have come forward with stories of what they've seen in the sky, experienced as a result of, of spotting crafts or interacting with beings alleged to be ETs. And we've had 70 years, the whole post-World War II period has been riddled. I mean, let's, you know, the invasion of LA, the uh, famous UFO flap over Washington, D.C. I lived through a UFO flap that occurred here in the East Coast during the 60s and 70s. And many of us have had encounters with things that we can't explain in, in normal terms, yeah. in terms of beings, technology, sightings. I, I would say that, in all fairness, the disclosure was never going to come from the government, and that the government, even by their own admission, if you read Project Blue Book from the 1960s, what, the, what were we given as, as, as an excuse for some of these sightings? Swamp gas. Really? <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was how lame it became, but it got worse over the years. And when, the, the reality is the top, the top um, security clearance in the government is 23, and cosmic disclosure security level is 49. So none of the government, including the president, can access that information. They stopped that after the Eisenhower. And that's where Kennedy starts it's spitting it out. And uh, Kennedy signs an agreement with the Brazian effort, or was it Gorbachev, one of the two, um, on November the 10th, 11th, or 12th of 1963 just before he died, which would essentially, um, America would release all its uh, eating uh, knowledge and documents to the Russians and vice versa, and they were going to work on it together. Well, Kennedy never lived too uh, too much longer, and that, that directive got overturned on the death of Kennedy. You know, and so after that, um, the idea of government disclosing anything to do with ETs is uh, beyond absurd because they're far too uh, low down in the security clearance level to ever reveal that stuff. There's got to be a full-on executive order to lower the security clearances down to presidential level before the government discloses anything. And that would become public because, you know, the executive orders and the bills that go in can be seen by the public. But uh, it's too sensitive. It was too sensitive for the Majestic 12. They got taken out two or three years back. It's Majestic 12 because it's now being run by the SSP, who are not here to save us. They never were. They're not interested in humanity at all. Um, which is something which Corey Good wouldn't admit. Um, and, and they have been running around in certain types of craft for the last 70, 80 years. Yeah. And they were the ones that fired the missile at Trump's plane when he was on his way to uh, Kim Jong un. Yeah. Uh, look, I don't know where anybody inside of the government is on this. I'm, I'm not one of those people that's looking for Trump or anyone else to ever make any kind of disclosure publicly. No. What I'm saying is, 
the phenomena of the UFO and the ET is a metaphysical function. And that until you have eyes to see, you're not going to understand what's really going on because your understanding is being stunted by the same media programs that run on mainstream and alternative media platforms. It's all been designed to obscure something that you can clearly understand once you have an understanding of the metaphysical aspects of this. Yeah. That's why I said earlier, for those who can see, you know, um, some people will get that. Uh, a few will get that. The majority will say, well, what's he talking about? Well, we have eyes and we see, but we don't always really see. And uh, once you um, understand certain levels and can fine tune your own abilities, you will see an awful lot more than you thought you could. And um, there's a lot more of them walking amongst us than people realize. And there's much above us that people don't understand. Yeah. You know, I would point people towards my friend, Sean Gautreaux, who has done massive amount of work exposing what's up in the sky, things that you cannot explain except to say that, let's just say, the space wars have been here for a long time and they're happening above you. If you believe that that space or near space or inside of the earth construct. Um, but when we begin to objectively look at the world itself and how it's run, and what Shane explained about the system on the Ruiner blog, you can go and read the Ruiner blog and you can glean very vital information about the structure of this world, which relates to not just 13 Illuminati families, no. but the covens and everything that sit above them. Yeah. And that's more crucial understanding right now than understanding whether something came from Zeta Reticuli or some bug-eyed bastard wants yeah. to, let us just say, probe you. Yeah. You know, um, we, you know, we have, um, I'm one of the very few who have actually handled the official control system document. And there's not 13 families, there's 301. And all those families all think that they're the top of the pyramid. <laughs> and they're so far down, it's not even funny. Well, it's funny to us, but they think that they're the top of the tree when they're not. And everyone's pawns in the game. And um, that sort of information is um, more useful because it's affecting us all and why we have engaged uh, these families. Uh, to get them to see the truth also. We, we've all been lied to. Uh, you know, uh, every single one of us, you know, uh, we touched on it before, new age programs. You know, uh, new age is not new. Blavatsky was coming out with that in the 1880s. You know, uh, free love, that was uh, in this, everyone thought was the first time that happened in the 1960s and the peace and hippie movement. No, that happened in the 1870s. History always repeats. We just don't recognize it. Um, um, well, and history also folds over on itself because as yeah. I think we both know, yeah. our history itself is not the narrative that we've been given. And that's yeah. another aspect to this is that on a continuous basis, on a, on a continuing and ongoing basis, history is revised and rewritten now daily, live on the internet. Yep. And this is why uh, the very first show I said to people, think and act different. People don't realize how important that is because we all uh, do have very repetitive lives which can be uh, garnered by the AI system and data mined, you know, and profiled on social media. And it's building the whole picture 
of how that person, and it can predict that person's going to go and make a cup of coffee at a certain time on a certain day. <clears throat> so does that, you, yeah, exactly. I mean, you just change one thing on one day. You know, you drive to work, you go down the same route all the time. Go a different way. You, you do not realise what a ripple in the pond that is. And if we all do it, that ripple becomes a tsunami. And, and the same applies with the old media. We all got together. We can bring this system down overnight by non-compliance, non-violent non-compliance. So you just brought something interesting up, and it's, it's something that I've been talking about with a number of people. When you talked about that predictability factor, mm. um, most people do not understand that many of the mind control programs were linked into a, a program called Looking Glass that ran okay. from the post-World War period up until about two th late 2011, early 2012, the system was failing. That system was a predictive system, but it was a predictive system based on probable futures. Mm. Those probable futures were these basically mapped and simulated using subjects inside of mind control programs to then project that onto what you would call the, the, the chronological materia. Yeah. That in, in itself was one of the reasons why after 2012, we began to notice what we now call the Mandela effect. Yeah. The Mandela effect was, has been largely attributed to CERN. CERN was fired up and used in certain ways as a result of the failure of looking glass, the artifacts that we experienced as Mandela effects. And you may not agree with me because I've never discussed this with you before. But the Mandela effect were largely artifacts of the failed looking glass project. They were timelines that convoluted and conflated themselves with the present timeline. Yeah. And the point behind this is that there was always time mapping occurring on a predictive nature. And it has never been perfect because of one factor, human consciousness the unpredictability of the human at the very moment when you most need them to be predictable, they zig to the zag. Yeah. And this is why not even the ETs, not the government, not these ancient programs that they were running, uh, the, the various time manipulation devices and the things that they brought in under paperclip encumbered from uh, Nazi projects going back to the Vril Society going way back to the 1800s, hmm. that all of, these, all of these projects and all of this technology fail when human consciousness is asserted into it because it becomes the X factor. Yeah. You know, uh, and this is why, why we've had the rise of social media because they knew it was failing. They, they knew Looking Glass was failing from 2003 onwards, and at yeah. the end of 2012, it went blank. It was just static. Yeah. I was um, told in 2010 that it was failing. I was told that by a remote viewer who was inside the project. Yeah. The um, Bill Brockerby had a lot to say about that. Um, yeah. yeah, he did. Um, that was kind of interesting and filled in some pieces for me. Uh, you know, and I wait, we had a lot of fear programs, which is another thing about the alt media fear. And, you know, thankfully the Nibiru has died down. Um, and CERN and, uh, you know, global epidemics, global warming, global cooling, all that. It's fear and low vibrational thinking. Uh, well, that's what they're trying to get people into. You know, um, but uh, I remember I wrote a piece on Cosmic Voice um, on the 1st of January. People were flipping out because uh, Wilcock had promised everyone in the alt media that, that we were all going to ascend. Um, and uh, light chips had come down and whiskers to a 5D planet, you know. Um, <laughs> ascension uh, doesn't mean you go anywhere. 
you just change the frequency and the vibration you're operating under and it's taken place now you know and um it's uh, i've kind of lost my thread now what were you talking about i kind of went off there uh, oh, that's okay no well i think we circled back towards looking glass for just uh, the looking here. glass yeah I, yeah i wrote a piece of what hasn't taken place you know people were focusing on the set, uh, ascension hadn't it and i says we're not dead as i knew then there was a contract um I didn't know the finer details, uh, but I knew there was a contract for the end of humanity by 2012. That's why it went blank. And the timeline changed, and the contract was up, and obviously uh, meeting with Kim and uh, seeing some of the documents I was to trust um, confirmed those contracts were real. Um, I says, we're all still alive. It, uh, that means we've won. And it's up to us to claim that victory. I remember Shane saying that. Um, we have to learn to claim the victory because they can't change. They tried it. Uh, they did a four-year loop cheat and trying yep. to yep. Wrap, uh, wrap in 2016 uh, as 2012. Uh, and Wilcock was a pusher to that. Um, uh, articles that he wrote in 2011, he was putting out in 15 until... Um, I think both of us said, uh, <laughs> what are you doing with the loop news? You know, um, and Sen was involved in that. And Sen was taken down for that particular purpose or the main purpose in August of 2015. And it was a case from my point of view then is, uh, can we uh, survive through the end of 2016? Because that, that's their cheat gone. Um, what we've seen um, since 2017 onwards is a, is a rapidly increasing collapse of uh, the system, the control system. But largely, that's by that by that time. Certainly, by 2015, the top end of the control system we pretty much decimated. Um, and then we were down to the factions, you know, the covens have collapsed, the parents are, are rendered mute, there was only two left, and neither are in here, and um, they think they can play games, but not as much as they thought they could, um, and now we're left with um, a load of um, hybrids, I thought, uh, who are playing the game of the former control system and minions, and they will collapse. You know, uh, Shane and I disagreed. Uh, there's very few things we disagreed. I remember Shane when he came on in 2015 and he said, uh, you know, they're trimming all this infighting, they're just trimming the fat. And I disagreed. I said, no, that not only will they trim the fat, they will eat the lean. And what will be left is a few psychopaths with no control, uh, no wealth, no assets. And that's what's taking place. And yes, we have some hurdles to get uh, overcome, but we've come so far now. And this is why they're now flooding the alt media, because too many are joining now. And, uh, and you've got to give some credit to Q, whoever that may be. Um, it has generated an interest outside of the alt media that's pulled people in uh, that can then learn uh, or I should say unlearn the lies, you know. Uh, so from that, that point of view, whether Q was a, a Langley program, it's actually failed. And everything they're doing now fails. Their false flags fail. Uh, their major epidemics you know, they were going to launch the Zika virus in 2017. It failed. Didn't even get off the ground. The Ebola, the H1N1. They've tried all kinds of germ warfare. Um, Rothschilds threatened uh, global germ warfare last year with a certain virus. And so um, we changed it. So if they unleash it, only Rothschilds die. You see... Uh, Coordinated genetics can work both ways. <laughs> so it's uh, 
we are, we just have to learn to come together. And uh, ultimately, they're stuck in the same nest that we are right now. Yeah, there's, there's a, uh, we're reaching a tipping point. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to destroy the nest, they're, they're they're risking destroying themselves if they could do that. I'm of the opinion they cannot. That no. that's not allowed at any levels. No. And that the greatest weapon that they've had is our ignorance and our fear. Yep. That's all they've got left, threats. You know, um, just don't give in to it. You know, I say often and I've shown her, never put a, uh, never allow anyone to put you in fear. You know, we've had it all right throughout the internet. You know, uh, we're all going to die, Y2K and... Uh, 2012 and this never who's coming this year that year and the following year and the year after and the year after uh, and it never did you know um, there's a reason it's because we're on a different timeline altogether we're still interacting with the old timeline which is why uh, the two worlds uh, looks a lot clearer now you know um, it's a, eventually that timeline of theirs that they're on will fall away and so will a whole heap of minions with them in my opinion which may disturb some people but they can't hold humanity back from going forward uh, any longer they've lost control they lost control at the end of 2012 yeah Yes, once they were blind, they lost control. Yeah. And the consciousness waves that came in began slowly, and they're still permeating the energetics of the earth to slowly wake up people as they begin to realize that they've been deceived. Yeah. I mean, and to some extent or another, even the the Q movement, the the MAGA movements, uh, are an indication that people no longer accepted the status quo. Was that the best course to take? I don't know. I think we need to avoid having anointed figures to be yeah. our saviors. Yep. Uh, both how you know, people look up to yourself and Kim because we're involved in the trust. But um, as it stands, you know, uh, we had OPPT and Swiss Indo and, mm -hmm. and, and collateral accounts, um, uh, prosperity packages, and a whole heap of other financial programs that were proliferating uh, through the alt media. And yeah, bizarrely, uh, the Manor World Holding Trust um, is not covered, which is... Uh, of in and of itself. What you know, as it stands, you know, um, the trust uh, is still something else that hasn't delivered as it stands. You know, there are extenuating circumstances because of that. You know, we are, boy, have we worked hard to get those funds out to the people, you know, but you know, you still got to take it as it stands. Is it something else that's promising, something that hasn't been delivered? And um, there's a, a whole litany of them in the old media. Um, but then, do we really need money? Well, that was then you and I had this conversation. Mm. And the odd thing is that the money would, would come as a result of an awakening yeah. that money isn't the most important element. Could it yes. help? It could help to bridge yeah. us if we have the consciousness level to understand that ultimately money is a place marker for an exchange of values. No one owns the earth. Nope. And to this day, I'm amazed at the brazenness of governments and corporations that claim title deed over a, a planet that they did not create, that they are not the first to have developed, and that they are in fact sullying in the name of their own greed and ignorance. 
Yeah. And until we rise above that and realize the strongest commodity is A, our ability to get along and work together side by side to be able to vision what would make this world a better place and us as individuals individually happy and productive. Yeah. Then what comes next is the energy in whatever form that flows to facilitate those designs. So running after any funds, whether it's OPPT, Swissindo, the trust, or any other form of, of money simply feeds into this low-level consciousness of lack. Because yeah. when we look at the world and we see the system, what we see is the power and money amassed against us, not realizing that they constitute a tiny sliver of a minority on this world. That what they seek to control and exploit ultimately is the only thing of value, which is the human mind and the human presence on this world. Yeah. You know, um, I had a conversation with um, a prominent person uh, on the me uh, alt media um, when I said the money to me to do with the trust is low priority and uh, that person didn't particularly like that comment um, but then he doesn't understand uh, and it's not his fault I might add um, the bigger picture of it there's far more things going on uh, with the trust than uh, what's in the asset bank. And um, this is kind of why I started uh, the groups, the THI groups, um, is we have to learn to work together. And people think, why is he saying that? And because we don't is why. You know, we've, we've all grown up with this competitive streak and it's not just materialistic either. You know, it's uh, body sizes and the size of genitals and all, all this nonsense. You know, my uh, hair looks better than yours and I've got better shoes and better handbag. You know, it, it, people, uh, it's become a way of life where the, uh, they spend most of the day making comparisons to others. Even when they're having a discourse, my idea is better than yours, you know. And it's become such a way of life now that people don't even recognize they're doing it. That means that was a program and a successful program. And we have to wind that back and step out of that competitive streak we've all got. Competition to me is sport only. You're competing over the size of houses and, and the price of cars. Uh, you're not thinking right. You're just not thinking right. And, and so we created these groups and we knew there was going to be issues because people uh, have unbalanced egos and uh, it's more important that they're the leader than someone else and their ideas are more important than somebody else's. And so you have to roll that program back and get people not competing, but cooperating, which is how you would go forward uh, with the funds of creating businesses that are a cooperative where everyone is equal and everyone has their say and not competitive and dog eat dog, which is what currently most people are operating under. Uh, and so, that's why I created these groups and eventually people, natural leaders will come forward. You know, not everyone is that type. Natural leaders will come forward that are operating in a better way, need not greed, and, and sharing ideas. So then when the money eventually comes out, and I think there's a, for want of a better term, a divine time, and I don't think we're ready yet, um, it will be released. And it, 
will be released when there's sufficient threshold of people who have stepped out of the competitive materialistic way of life, which has destroyed us all, I might have, and into a new way of caring and sharing and looking after and, uh, the funds, which is, uh, represents pieces of paper but in real terms represents your life force energy, which is the richest thing you can have on this planet. Not pieces of paper and numbers in a bank account, life force energy. That's all pieces of paper are. Pieces of paper and bits of metal have no value. They never did. That's the illusion. That's what they fed you. You know, and even the families, all 301 of them got duped with pieces of paper with numbers on them whilst they handed over the assets to the harvesting machine. And let me drop this in here while we're at this place. The assumption that these beings who run this world are your betters is a false assumption. The capital that sits behind the ugly story that is child trafficking, human trafficking, pedophilia, white slavery, and loose harvesting is the so-called immortals, for lack of a better word, all of those who sit above the visible power structure. Harvest energy on a regular basis is the real capital. This is the secret behind the adrenochrome harvesting, yeah. which is, an, is, is for them simply a life extension methodology based on harvesting the energy of the innocent they are the parasites you are the host and when you understand the capital that comes into play behind pedophilia and human trafficking you begin to understand what their weak point is they need us yeah oh, but they are whilst they um you have to give them credit for the system they've created. Ultimately, that system is the Ouroboros. Yeah. The, the snake chewing at both ends. And eventually you're left with nothing. And uh, you see it in many examples of programs that, are, that ended up, uh, they, they kept pushing programs as their desperation increased to end things uh, before 2012, you know. We were designated for World War III in 1990. It didn't, it didn't fly. Um, uh, so they then increased other programs, which then took off other programs. Yeah, go read Albert Pike's letter to Mazzini from 18... Was it? 80s, yeah. Yeah. I mean... I, Everything was everything was mapped out in that yeah. document, explaining exactly what was to occur. Two wars occurred. The third war is the war we're in now. It's not a world war as you would understand it. Yeah. And it is not being allowed to be played out anymore. No. Um, it's gone. They just uh, failed to recognize it. You know, it's a bit like the RV. It's another financial program that's been running for near two decades now. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Uh, it's not possible. It never was. You know, uh, you would need uh, the assets of three to four planets to pull that RV off. And yet we still got people in the alt media pushing that, Gilliland and a number of others. Uh, you know, when common sense with the figures that back here that are put out on our show, it doesn't make any sense. It's, it's not possible. You know, uh, and you need those RV people uh, to step down, like Tank did. You know, step down. It's, you know, it's just another energy harvesting program. Something's coming, something's coming, something's Many coming. Many of the people caught in the RV program are people who were involved in mercenary operations, oh, yeah. black science, black project operations, who were promised this as remuneration. 
And I, I know that some of you out there who may hear this are people who are still waiting, thinking that you're gonna get paid. But the truth of the matter is, there is nothing behind their payment system. They snookered you, they yeah. used you, you will not be paid. And the sadness of that isn't that you're not gonna be paid, but that you continue to abide by the illusion that they gave you. When the real power is to step out of that, that system completely and realize they needed you then, they still need your complicity now, and they need the rest of us to agree that their system continues to work when it clearly does not work anymore. No, it just doesn't, you know. It's all deception, it's smoke and mirrors at the end of the day. You know, we got generals holding this country to ransom because they're waiting for their billion dollar payout of pallets and pallets of dinars that was stolen by the Bush cartel during the Iraq war. You know, and they sold you them all. You know, they got their money out of it by selling dinars to the alt media. You know, they took the money. It's gone, it's spent. And then you've got, you know, the, uh, oh, well, we've got the fake bonds from the 1930s. They're spent also. They were all pledged to the trust. So they're gone. You know, and then you've got um, bunkers full of this, that, and the other in Philippines and other places. Uh, good luck with that because they, they all got empties in two, 2014 as one particular alt media person just found out recently. They're all empty, all, they're all put in a safe location that no one can access apart from five people, as I understand it. This, by the way, is part of the con job that's going on behind cryptocurrencies, too. That's the that's an NSA Langley program. Nobody wants to hear that, do they? No, well, it's, it's data mining, metadata. You know, this gets into the algorithms of Facebook and uh, Cliff High. Cliff High is running a, a Microsoft algorithm type program like the Oracle. You know, and, and he admitted, did he not, that the Cody Good story messed up his show? That's what he said. He said it on our show. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, and that's because the predictive nature failed. And um, I did a, a, a piece um, that covered crypto and Bitcoin. And, you know, um, we always hear the same thing. It's like the bricks going back 2012. They're going against the cabal and the book in the system. Well, where are they now? You know, here we are seven years later, and what are bricks doing? Nothing. You know, both of them are set up by Rothschilds and Rockefellers. <laughs> Do you think they're going to book the system? No, they're not. You know, and then uh, Bitcoin's going to, uh, you can uh, work around the cabal and their banks. No, they created them. It was created in a joint venture to do with metadata collecting out of Langley and the NSA. But you try telling people that, no, they think crypto is going to buck the system. No, you're being sold into a data profiling on, on an even more massive scale than social media is. And these people are supposed to be awake in the alt media. And one of the most famous books was Orwell, 1984. Yep where it told you they were going to go and head towards a cashless society. And there's a lot of people that, that like that idea. I, I want to see a cashless society, but you have to get rid of the system and have a, at least two, gen, two generations of trust that the new system we've replaced it with is open, transparent, and fair before you go anywhere near going cashless society. Because what happens is, and I think it was covered in a movie once, um, and I'm never good at remembering movies, it's not the only thing I'm not good at uh, remembering anyway, whereby everyone's data 
are and credits. It wasn't uh, X number of dollars, it was credits. And if you went against the system or were classed as a dissident, which every one of us in the alt media is a dissident in their eyes because we're going against the government in some way, they just press delete on your account. Then what have you got? Nothing. Whilst we've got cash, you've got control of your own life. If you've got cash, you've got control of your own life because you can go and buy where you want to buy. But if your credit card suddenly gets turned off tomorrow and your bank account gets shut down, and we're seeing evidence of a uh, massive amounts of ATMs going down, I've had two of my own members report uh, $2,000 and $3,000 vanishing out of their account. Yep. And people think, no, they can't do that, and the FDIC will cover it, and this, that, and the other. Well, the FDIC is bankrupt as well, because it's part of the same system, although we have uh, done some well, changes. Just, just as a corrective there, look at the language behind FDIC, and remember at the very bottom line of what that statement says, the last line is backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. We were also bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> and have been bankrupt so, since 1934, in fact. So, and in fact, that's the point. <laughs> the full faith and credit of the United States government has always been bankrupt. It's been bankrupted three times now. Yeah. And you cannot put your faith in mammon. Well, there was, um, it came out in the UK was it got covered in the UK. Um, January the 1st, of course, everyone's a bit inebriated from the New Year celebration, and they'll roll these uh, bills out, and most people ignore them. Um, but it stated uh, on January the 1st, 2016, which uh, applied here as well, that in the event of an emergency, uh, and the terminology to, to describe what an emergency would be, was uh, predictably uh, short uh, or non-existent. So a bank decides uh, it's an emergency, and in the event of an emergency, your account becomes part ownership of the bank. So in other words, if the bank turn around and declare emergency like they did in 2008, and they got bailed out, you will no longer own your own account. That's what they were telling you right in your face, and you're all ignored it. Uh, and people, you know, uh, people are still banking with Wells de Fargo, Citibank, Bank of America, Morgan Chase, uh, and, and not understanding. Those are the first to go. Same in the UK, Barclays, HSBC, Royal Bank of Scotland, Lloyds. They're the first that are going to collapse, and they will collapse. And there goes all, all your money. No, no, that's, they can't do that. That was oh, the they, mantra, uh, too big to fail in the 2008-2009 bailout. It, yeah. it did fail. Yeah, it did fail, because it was designed to fail. You know, everything's designed to fail. You know, this is why I say to people, we have to do things different. You know, uh, if we get funding for uh, THI or, or the People's Club's companies, if you're going to run it in the same core pirate structure as they did, which failed every single business, you're going to fail. So, you, you know, we have to not copy their method because they've all failed. Hold on. You know, how can people expect banks to be a viable business? You know, again, people have forgotten. Banks don't have any money. Banks only have our money. It's not theirs. They think it's theirs. And, and we've allowed them to think it's theirs. And we've allowed them to charge us one, two, or three dollars to access our own money. Or charge 8 to $15 to have a bank account when they're making ridiculous amounts off, not their money, but ours. You put $10 into your account 
they take $9 out and go and lend it to somebody else at exorbitant rates whilst giving you half of 1%. That interest is actually yours. Uh, and we have to um, start teaching finance again and banking and self-sufficiency and living to your means to the youth in schools again because nobody understands a single thing about finance. Sure. You know, just don't. Uh, and uh, suddenly those bankers who, you know, how can you have a, a, a bank, you know, in every town with 70-odd story buildings? You know, can you imagine the overheads of one, never mind several in every town, and still make money? You can't. And the question becomes, who did they borrow money from to build those buildings and to maintain them in the first place? Where's their profit? Where's their bottom line? Well, what they did, uh, they were... The Kim's predecessor was giving them liens and leveraging all the assets. So the trust owned every bank. <laughs> and yet the Rothschilds think they own it. No, you don't. Every one of them was pledged to the trust. Every in ground resource was pledged to the trust. Every building, every town, city, and village was pledged to the trust. And they never, they just kept giving them money and giving them pieces of paper. You know, Kim's predecessor just handed pieces of paper out like confetti. Because they knew pieces of paper have no value and they just collected all the assets. So let me ask the question here. At the end of the day, what is the underlying value behind any of this, including the values allegedly held by the trust? The value, uh, the overall value, is must not be recognised in terms of pieces of paper, pounds, that, yes. pounds, dollars, euros, or dinars, or zims and dongs. If you think in, in those terms, you're wrong. What is coming back out of the trust is life force energy, and in some cases, souls. That's, that's what's coming back from the trust. Life mm. force energy and souls. And the souls of men. Mm. Yeah, the book of Revelation talks about that. Interesting. There's yeah. one more thing I want to loop around here and yeah. close this out because we've gone long that I expected we were going to because we, we covered a lot of ground and we, we did kind of... We took a lot of detours along the way, but I think the narrative's pretty clear that we've dumped a lot of information. I talked about Jay Widener uh, doing his, um, dumping his bucket on YouTube over the last few weeks. And I wanna, I wanna carve this out right now. Um, I'm gonna read this. This is a 2017 email exchange between Jay Widener and I. Jay Widener, contacted me after I interviewed Patty Greer. That interview was two parts. Part of that interview was discussing Patty's issues with her films related to Gaia. And then the second part of it had to do with crop circles and some of the technology that she was exploring at that time as a result of what she found out about <clears throat> energy inside the crop circles. Mm. In this 2017 back and forth between Jay Widener in a summary email of Q&A, Jay Widener said to me, you, he says, you keep conflating Patty with Corey and David. They are two separate subjects. I can prove Patty is wrong. You cannot prove that Corey is wrong. To which I replied, actually, they are the same subject. Remember, you came at me with this. You know damn well I have been going at Wilcock and Good over their little theatrical concoction. You made the assertion that Patty is wrong. I can prove and have done so that Good fabricated his blue chicken story to line up with Wilcock's raw material as 
his entree into a production Wilcock was scouting for over a year with numerous people on the web. I have witnessed and documented these fabrications. This, this email goes on, and some of it's tangential, but what Jay Widener was going at in this email is he was trying to get me to back off of this Patty Greer video. I came back at him with his involvement with Cosmic Disclosure. And in the course of this, Jay tried to kind of parry with me over this, that they were separate issues. So here's the deal. Jay Widener, you are now going public and said that you were the producer responsible for Cosmic Disclosure. That Corey Good came to you with David Wilcock with a story that you believed was valid because it validated some of your own theories and some of your own research. You have told me that Patty Greer is a separate issue from David Wilcock and Corey Good until the last few weeks went on YouTube. You've now stated that, um, quote, poor Patty Greer is being sued why is poor patty greer being sued and what is the position of david wilcock and corey good in this if i came to you and showed you what my eyes have seen in terms of how corey good's own organizational group fabricated the gem drops including the fake david wilcock resi resignation are you willing to concede that you were wrong then and you're still wrong now because you will not talk about the one thing that sits behind the curtain like a Wizard of Oz figure? And I'm referring here to Gaia TV and specifically Yurko Rosave, who is the CEO of Gaia TV. Is Jay Widener going to discuss Yurko Rosave and the power that he holds? inside of alternative media. I'm going to direct you to statements made on a website called danwinner.com, a site that was taken over in a court settlement successfully litigated by Stan Tennant against Dan Winner, who had used Dan Winner's patented copyrighted material and presented it as his own. In the, in the context of this trial, there was a deposition given in which Mr. Tenen discusses a, uh, uh, sorry, I, I scanned down here. I, I lost my focus for a minute. Uh, Jumba Melchizedek, I'm sorry that many people were familiar with this. Did you know that Jumba Melchizedek has been, let us just say, a, va a vessel for Mr. Asabe, who had funded him and then bankrupted him several times, including last year when June Valla's entire organization was taken down by Mr. Asabe. In the deposition, Stan Tennant says, quote, I was not at all prepared when Mr. Melchizedek told me he could not rein in Mr. Winner unless I joined with him and his multimillionaire benefactor, Yurka Rosave, in quote, channeling Lucifer. I previously heard that Mr. Winner was involved in Satanism, but I did not take it seriously or try to confirm this. Mr. Rosave was then CEO of Corporate Express and Transicon in Broomfield, Colorado. And he is now the CEO of Gaia, the health food and exercise equipment mega corporation that is currently taking over numerous independent businesses. As we know from the transcript of Mr. Winner, a first confession posted at danwinner.com, Mr. Winner worked for Transicon under a front company set up by Mr. Rosave until Mr. Rosave fired him for refusing to end his plagiarism of my work. This then goes on to detail the first person witnesses of this ongoing practice of, quote, dark side worship of Satanism and Luciferianism. Yeah. 
inside of Gaia TV. Okay. So my question to Jay Widener is, as long as you're now in, in a mode for honesty and you've stated publicly in those videos that you're still friends with Mr. Asave, is it your intention to continue to cover for Mr. Asave? Or are you willing to go the extra mile now and own up to the fact that Mr. Asave is a front man operation of Eastern in intelligence planted into the United States and used to fund, finance, break, and basically control the new age occult alt media, which ultimately resulted in your being suckered by David Wilcock and Corey Good and the cosmic disclosure and the mess that has spilled into the internet and split entire communities in the consciousness of the truth movement. Because I would like to think, given Jay Widener, that you and I have corresponded, that I've interviewed you, and that I respected your work, that you're honest enough to go the extra mile and go back and look at the statements made in this deposition by Stan Tenen, included in court documents, successfully adjudicated and sealed by the court that resulted in a financial settlement and the seating over of danwinner.com to Stan Tenen to this day. These statements stand in fact. My emails demonstrate that you told me that you vetted Corey Good. So I think there's some responsibility here that goes a little beyond simply blaming Corey and David for everything. There's a bigger hand in play. And that's the dirty secret behind what's going on on the alt media in terms of who controls what. There are controllers that sit in the background who are vassals for the larger control system that has tried to take over free and independent media on the internet. Absolutely. You know, guys, the alt media people themselves have a choice. You can carry on but believing in Gaia TV when the evidence that I know, Randy knows, and Shane knows, is it's being run by Dark Magician and a Coven member. Yeah. And, and if you are really interested in waking up and going forward as a proper community, you have to walk away from Gaia TV. You have to walk away from the likes of Robert David Steele, who is lawsuiting everyone or trashing everyone or destroying other people's work. You have to walk away from Wilcock and Corey Good. I would love to see Wilcock, Corey Good, Drake, all join together with us, not discount them. Because everyone has, has given everyone. everybody has been lied to and everyone yeah. has been used. You know, uh, you know, we've all got pieces of the puzzle. And it's about time that these people who went off on wrong paths for whatever reason hold their hands up. It still stands, Mr. Wilcock and Corey Good. And I'm no doubt you'll extend that to Jay Widener. Absolutely. I, li I like Jay Widener as a person. And I think that's, we have that's, tremendous researchers and we have the ability to break through the yeah. darkness on this planet once these significant players turn away from the dark side. Yeah. You know, um, it, it, we've had, um, we've gone through a lot of names. And yeah. I want to uh, want to bring up two more before we end. You know, uh, Mr. Expert on um, on all things blue chicken, the dark journalist, again, yeah. peers out of nowhere, a bit like Jordan Sather, and suddenly is taking a narrative in a certain path and yet refuses, like ITNJ, on not using people who have already done that research. Neither of us uh, who outed Corey five years ago but even considered to go on Dark Journalist's show. Uh, and that, in, in and of itself, makes the Dark Journalist uh, suspicious, big time. You know? I'll just point out the, the origin of Dark Journalist is largely that 
it he did not exist until 2014 at all and only until that secret space program put on in texas where he was the on stage um host and the direct information that I got from the promoters of that event, because I know them, because I've worked with them, was they did not know who Dark Journalist was, that he was introduced to them by Catherine Austin Fitz and Joseph mm -hmm. Patrick Farrell. And yeah. when I traced back the history of Dark Journalist, I found one other previous event, and that was a coast-to-coast -coast AM show with Linda Moulton Howe. Yeah, it all, it all connected, it all uh, self-serving in their own ways um, and the final one I'd like to bring up uh, because I think it's important it, uh, it was one group and then it morphed into two uh, both of them had names of former CIA programs uh, be it Camelot and Avalon they were both CIA programs in the past and um, I think uh, those two um, more than anyone, because there was them that brought through you know, Wilcox um, and Drakes and all kinds of other people. And, and yet, uh, Kerry Cassidy sits there quiet. And Bill Ryan only chimed in on the back of uh, your uh, post. They have a lot of uh, answering to do also. And they need to um, own up who they were working for, and come and join us. And I will toss in one more because I have not talked about this. So in the final minutes here, yeah. um, I need to mention some characters who sat in the background and mouthed lies and slanders for years. And one of them is a, a lady named Terry Joyce, who mm -hmm. I used to work with. I was the person who explained to Terry Joyce the infiltration of alternative media back in 2014. Terry Joyce is now the voice of a group who continue to front what is called the sub-host defamation, slander, money laundering operation, which has attached my name to numerous sub-host domains on the internet in an attempt to make it appear as though I am responsible for promoting pornographic websites and running a money laundering operation through a, a, a very sophisticated system of, of money transactions run on the internet. And I've explained this in articles that I've written on the website and I've posted one video about it. But I, I would also hope at this point the people responsible for this be advised and know that I'm very aware of what this system really is and that I have forensic evidence in my possession secured in ways that cannot be tampered with that not only validate my innocence but also implicate those who are responsible for it. And to those people who continue to mouth these stories, you've been warned the day will come because it's a slander and it's libel. And while I don't think anybody inside my own groups, my, my listeners, my supporters, the people who know me believe this, yeah. it's a lie that continues to sit out there. Oh, yeah. And it is another way that intelligent agencies have set up this divide and conquer mentality in an attempt to slander people who, frankly, people like Thomas and I have worked without pay for years. Yeah. So I think we've covered a lot of ground, and I, I understand that, that probably – you're going to want to roll this back and listen to it. I'll try to put some notes up with it that'll be kind of time point guideposts with this. But the important thing was that Thomas and I both felt we needed to make a joint statement and put these things on the record 
simply because some of it has not been collated before, some of it hasn't been stated before, and this is the time. Again, this is a call for anybody who's been operating, let us just say, on the, the dark side, not the dark cabal. Come and join us. Yeah. If you don't now, you're going to join us later, and it would be better than be on the right side of the bars. Yep. Just saying. The, the uh, I said it last November. The alt media, as we know, it is finished. Uh, a new one will morph out of it. And yep. if you want to stay in the old one and carry on uh, spouting BS and uh, playing the drama role of he said, she said, fine, you carry on. But you're going to end up with a lot less litmus because people are, are getting tired of it. And, uh, you know, and important people uh, within the community are being attacked uh, on a ever-increasing basis. And it's up to the, the, the listeners to recognise that and support it. You know, like Randy said, you know, we, you know, we're putting lives on the line here. Yeah. To get we you. We put our lives on the lines for years already. Yeah. Uh, not only lives on, uh, lifestyles on the line, but lives also. You know, uh, we, Randy's had a number of attacks. We've had a number of. Uh, <laughs> We've had a good number of attacks. <laughs> a number of incidents, shall we say. Um, they're the type of people you need to protect. Um, um, as for the rest who are following RVs and, um, or, and blue chickens, walk away. You know, you've already seen the lies of the mainstream media and people are walking away in record numbers. We want them people to come and join us. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're not selling anything. Even the trust, we're not selling it. We don't have to sell it. When it takes place, it takes place. Until then, it's important to realize they're doing this for a reason. And the sole reason is they're losing the narrative. And if we get more people away from these uh, program members and deceivers and into the community, and we're all pulling in the same direction, we can end this game very, very quickly. They've lost the narrative. It's only certain ones in certain groups that are keeping their system going. Once you walk away, it collapses. It collapses. Synchronicity, I looked at the clock. It's 11.11. Can't think, of a, can't think of a better way to end this. There's our time stamp right there. Yeah. Didn't we do a show on 11-11? Yeah, yeah. Wednesday, <laughs> May 22nd, and it's 11-11 as we're going to wind up this, this recording. So thanks for listening. Thanks for staying with us. Um, Thomas, tell people where they can find you. Um, Truth, Honor, and Integrity Show on Spreaker.com. There you uh, go. And uh, I can be found <laughs> almost anywhere but my website now because <laughs> that's pretty much got holes blasted through it. So um, YouTube forward slash off planet media or patreon.com forward slash off planet media. And for those of you who support us, love us, and are with us, we love you, we support you. And the truth is out there, it's inside you now. Um, Go show the rest of the world your light. See you another time. Thank you. Bye for now.